Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at Espeon and we're going to be looking at Espeon strengths and weaknesses. We've had a little more time to look at Espeon and I recently reread the abilities. So let's just take a look at Espeon's strengths first, or well, at least a few of them. As you can see on screen, we're going to be showing some gameplays from three games I did, all different types of builds so I could kind of give you the rundown with it. And first we're going to be starting off with the burst damage. One of Espeon's biggest strengths with their Psy Shock side beam build is going to be the burst damage. It does an insane amount of damage for very good support as a good stun and execute, meaning the lower HP the opposing Pokemon are, it will straight up just take them out after a certain percentage, kind of like Greninja's uh, ability, sir. And another big thing about Espeon is their cooldown. Their cooldown on Psy Shock and most of their abilities is very, very low. Psy Shock here actually has a four second cooldown time four seconds so you could really spam it so much Psybeam beam does have a little bit longer one but psy shock is a four second cooldown and that's just kind of insane you could just spam it all game long and you could just sit in the back lines and take him out uh looking at the strengths there's also some weaknesses that kind of go along with this move set though too not, not just that move set all move sets really and we're going to be looking at the basic attacks next. The basic attacks are something I think kills Espeon. Their basic attacks are just so bad. It's You get one boosted attack, but it's on such a long cooldown. Uh, because if you guys don't know how the basic attacks work for Espeon, since Espeon's just going to be free now for all those people who waited. Uh, we're looking at the basic attacks. The basic attacks, there's a bar that has to fill up before you get it. And it just kind of, it's on a time limit. When it's up, it's up. You get a basic attack. Not a good basic attack. It doesn't do that much. And it's just, uh, it's not nearly as good as a normal basic attack. So that's one thing really holding them back. And with that, let's look at the HP. The HP on Espeon, of course, they are an attacker, a special attacker. And most special attackers don't have a lot of health. But one of their big weaknesses is just getting shredded. Even if you run focus ban on this character, I feel, at least for me, even if I'm sitting in the back lines and someone runs at me, even if I have focus ban, they'll just take me out before it even has a chance to pop. It'll pop and then I'll get KO'd before I could even heal. And that's just my personal experience with Espeon so far. But again, we will be sitting in the back lines going back to strengths on Espeon. We have the range. The range is insane. On the, Even though the basic attacks are not good, they're very long range. You can kind of peck people from afar, but mostly you're going to want to sit back and shoot Psy Shock at them if that's the build you're running. And if you're not running Psy Shock, well, I'm not even going to judge you. I thought the other build was very bad at the start, but we'll get to that later. That I think it's not as bad as people think, but Psy Shock is still the premier move for this character. And... With that, we're also going to go with, um, all right, let's, let's take a look at Espeon's ability now. Their ability is very, very good, actually. It is Magic Bounce. If you guys don't know what Magic Bounce does, it makes you immune to hindrances when you have that shield around you. The diamond-looking shield around Espeon, as long as you have that, if anyone tries to slow you or stun you or put you to sleep, it will not affect you. And in fact, whoever tried to stun you or slow you or anything of that sort... It'll actually get reflected back and they will get slowed and take damage for trying to slow you or stun you or put you to sleep or anything of the sorts. So it's a very good ability. As long as you have it up, you know you can't be stunned. And if they try to stun you, they will be injured in return. And this character has so many slows and so many ways to just negate the enemy team. I think it's very, very solid. I think going looking at the other moveset now, the other moveset... Here, the one where you could charge up five times and shoot them away. This moveset is very, very interesting because it slows the enemy when it hits them and does more damage the lower HP they are. So it still has that kind of execute vibe to it, but not nearly as good. But the thing it does is you could charge it up and it hits random enemy, you know, Pokemon. It hits random enemy Pokemon, so you can't really aim it. And that's what makes it bad because the damage is getting split. You're not doing too much to it. But, if you are running Future Sight, this is the big thing I saw about it. If you hit an opposing Pokemon with Future Sight, all of your beams will lock on to that specific Pokemon doing massive damage to it. Your Future Sight can be reduced cooldown every, for every beam of the five you hit. And so that can lower almost down to nothing. And then if you happen to KO them before the Future Sight bursts, you will get your beams back 
but it will launch way more than there was before, and it does crazy damage. Same thing goes with the other build, Psy Shock. If you have Future Sight and Psy Shock running, and you put Future Sight on an opposing Pokemon, and they die before you can get your Future Sight to pop, you will get Psy Shock back, and it will be doing more damage than it did before when it's glowing. And I think that the Future Sight ability is by far the way to go way over Psybeam just because it buffs up your other attacks so much. Whether you're running Psy Shock or the other move, I'm blanking on the name right now. I'll probably put it on screen right now. But either ways, I think that for sure Future Sight is the way to go no matter what. And lastly, I think we could look at one more. This is kind of a weakness. It kind of isn't at the same time. But let's look at the Unite move here. Espeon's Unite move. At first glance, it feels very, very underwhelming. And I don't think it's that bad looking at it now. It can be very good. You pick up people that are in your circle as long as they're not immune. Uh, that's what really holds back this Unite move. It'll pick people up, then push them away. The push away can be very good, but at first it may look like a weakness. But if you could get behind the whole other team with an eject button where you just happen to come in for a gank or a flank, whatever you want to call it, and you could push them all into your enemy team after stunning them, then it could be massive damage. But if they are immune, like you're against an unstoppable greedy, you're against a rapid spinning blastoise, if you're against anyone who cannot be stunned or picked up, then this Unite move is just kind of worthless. It's just there and you can't do anything really with it. So that is pretty unfortunate. This Unite move could either be a very big weakness or a very big strength. And this really depends on what the enemy team comp is. If they have a lot of unstoppables, that's going to be a big problem for you. If they have a bunch of people who can't, who are getting stunned all the time, then it's more than fine to cut out this Unite move. But those are some of the strengths and weaknesses for Espeon. For anyone who is trying out Espeon here, I would highly, highly recommend going Future Sight and Psybeam. If you want to try out the other move, that's up to you. It is not as bad as it looks at first glance. But if you're playing Espeon, keep in mind, you're going to be squishy, but you have long range. Stay away, don't go in the fight, and good luck to anyone who's trying out Espeon. Oh, hey, if you saved this long, I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Peace.